blue shot's particularly been hammered by commercial fishing, especially around Europe. Common fisheries policy has actually allowed the destruction of, well, all species, because the Mediterranean is virtually dead. So it's good that we're seeing them. I, d I dispute calling this an attack when you're chumming the water and you're getting in, in close proximity to them. Um, you've got a, an animal that is using its senses. It's there to feed because you've heightened its senses. And, you're and, and, and people are flapping around yeah. Yeah. and it's just a bite. You know about it if it's an attack. An attack. Um, two weeks ago I was in Florida, not far from Trump's resident, actually, residence actually. And and I was there's a lot of sharks with, there. Yeah, I was diving with bull sharks. You, and, and you know, those, those sort of animals, you know about it if you actually are attacked by them in brackish Don't, water and rivers. I, I completely understand, you know, you, you're, you're conservationist uh, and you've made some wonderful films and you're very passionate. Why would any sane human being want to go and swim with bull sharks? Um, Actually, to demystify them, you know, we, we were surrounded by 20 and they're an absolutely amazing species. I, I wouldn't do it particularly at night time. I wouldn't do it around a river mouth, but in open water and daytime, right. it's, it, it is a fantastic experience. And blue sharks in Cornwall. You know, I mean, thousands of people every year are now going snorkeling and going out and seeing these blue sharks. What's your advice to people? Should they continue doing this? Should they perhaps not be putting food chum in the water? I mean, the, these operations are bringing a, a good amount of revenue uh, in Cornwall and, yeah. and, and, and across the world. And they're creating ambassadors or people understand sharks, understand the issues. So it's a good thing to have these interactions. Unfortunately, it's very hard to get um, sharks consistently next to your boat without chumming. So almost all diver operations, all films use <sighs> this method. Once you do that, there is an increased chance of an, of an issue. But again, this is minor. And there are thousands of these operations running, and it's incredibly rare. So I wouldn't call this necessarily an attack. This is a bite. It's unfortunate. And I hope the dive operators continue as soon as possible. The thing you don't want to be doing is wearing jewellery. You don't want to be flapping around on the surface. And you don't want to get between a piece of bait and no, a shark. No, quite. And you know, I don't quite. know the exact situation, but something's happened there. And a final thought. James, perhaps a rather important final thought. Uh, there's been some terrible things happen on our big oceans. You know, terrible, terrible things that have happened. What, um, what can people do if they want to help? From a conservation point of view, I think anything, any, anything that supports the reduction of illegal um, fishing and commercial operations that, you know, we see these huge um, fishing fleets coming, coming from Europe and just decimating um, all our fish stocks. That is, even though that's regulated and it's legal, that is highly destructive to the ecosystem. So the more that we can campaign, follow conservation organisations and put pressure on um, increased management of our fisheries, increased management of our oceans and our seas, we can stop overfishing and we can allow these ecosystems to rebuild.